As our mini series on advanced scroll animations continues, in this video, I am going to cover something I intentionally skipped the first time I looked at it. This website, which won award site of the day in August, really caught my eye with its scroll animation. Just by looking at it, you can tell it's got a lot of moving parts, making it trickier to rebuild compared to some other scroll animations we have done in the past. But I knew I had to take a shot at it for this series. It took me around 5 to 6 hours to pull it off, but I managed to replicate everything. From the complex clip path transitions synced with the scroll to the scale animations on the images, the reveal effect with animated filters, and even the text animations that respond to the current image. In this video, I am going to show you how you can build this exact scroll experience using GSAP and Scroll Trigger. Now, building these animations takes time and effort, so if you find this helpful, a like would be much appreciated. And if you are new here, consider subscribing for more content like this. Also, if you want to unlock the source code, don't forget to check out the pro membership link in the description. Alright, let's jump straight into the code. Let's start by setting up the container. We'll need two sections, one for the sticky content, which we'll call the pin section, and another for the about section, which will just have some placeholder text for now. Next, let's focus on the pin section. For the text elements, we'll create a div called info. Inside this, we'll add five text elements, the title, tagline, year, tag, and a link. Each of these will contain a paragraph or an anchor tag to display the content. Now for the progress bar, we'll add another div called progress. We'll update its site dynamically on scroll using scroll trigger later. Finally, we'll need to add the images. I'll create a div with the class image and insert an image inside it. I'll replicate this four more times, update the image sources and assign a unique ID to each image. And that's it for the HTML, let's move on to styling now. We'll start by resetting all margins and paddings to zero and applying box sizing to border box. Next, we'll set the HTML and body to full width and height and given them a 1200 viewport height so we have enough scrolling space to work with. We'll also apply the custom font to give it a clean modern look. For images, we'll make them cover their container completely using object fit cover, ensuring they scale properly without distortion. Then for the text elements, like paragraphs and links, we'll use white text set to uppercase with a 13 pixel font size. Links will have no underline for a clean look. Now for the sections, each section will take up the full width and height of the viewport and will position them relative to make sure an absolutely positioned elements inside them behave as expected. For the pin section, we'll give it a dark background. The about section will have an even darker background and will center the text both horizontally and vertically using flexbox. Next up, let's focus on the info section. We'll position it in the middle of the screen using absolute position and translate Y. Inside, we'll use flexbox again to lay out the text elements side by side. For the link button, we'll align it to the right and give it a subtle border with a rounded corner for a polished look. Now onto the progress bar, we'll position it near the right side of the screen with a thin 2 pixels width and height of 120 pixels. The background will be dark grey and the progress itself which will animate later will be white. As for the images, we'll position them absolutely in the center of the viewport and scale them up slightly using transform. We'll clip the images initially using a polygon shape which will animate later to reveal the full image. And finally, we are applying some scroll behavior using Lennis for smooth scrolling. You can find this block of code on its official documentation website. That wraps up the styling. Next, we'll move on to the JavaScript where we'll bring these animations to life. Before we dive into the JavaScript, I just want to give you a quick heads up. 
I've created a file called data.js which contains an array of objects. This is where we'll be pulling the content for the images from so it keeps things organized and dynamic. Now let's get into the JavaScript part where we'll bring everything to life using GSAP and scroll trigger. First, we'll import the data from our data file. We also need to register the scroll trigger plugin to enable scroll based animations. After that, we'll create a new instance of Lennis to handle smooth scrolling. Lennis works alongside GSAP, so we'll link its scroll updates to scroll trigger using the onscroll method and ensure that GSAP's internal ticker handles the smooth scroll behavior. Next, let's grab a few elements from the DOM. We'll select the pin section, which is our sticky section, the progress bar to animate its side based on scroll, and finally the images that will animate as a part of the scroll sequence. Now let's start with the image entry animation. This function handles how each image appears as we scroll into it. We scale the image down slightly, apply a clip path that initially hides the image and fade it in with opacity. Then we smoothly animate it to its full size, revealing the entire image as the user scrolls. The power 2 easing gives it a nice smooth effect, making it look polished. We also add an animation to the image filter, reducing the contrast and brightness as the image fully comes into view. This creates a reveal effect that emphasizes the image as it becomes the main focus. For exiting the images, we have two different animations. One for when the user scrolls forward and another for when they scroll back. When scrolling forward, we shrink the image down and fade it out smoothly. When scrolling back, we reverse the entry animation, scaling the image up slightly and reapplying the clip path effect to hide it again. Next, we have the update info content function which updates the text content in the info section dynamically as the images change. We retrieve the relevant text like the title, tagline and year from the data file based on the current image index. For a nice touch, each letter of the text fades in one by one using GSAP's 2 function which targets the individual spans we created for each letter. This creates a staggered effect, making the text appear smoothly in sync with the images.
Now that we have the animations for images and text in place, we create a scroll trigger instance to control the pinned section. The trigger is set to the pinned section and we pin it in place while scrolling. The animation runs across a large portion of the scroll determined by the pin height, giving us the room we need for the sequence of images and animations. Inside the on update callback, we calculate the progress of the scroll and break it down into cycles to manage each image's appearance. The total progress is multiplied by 5 since we have 5 images and we calculate which image cycle we are in based on the scroll progress. As we move through each cycle, we adjust the scale of the current image based on the scroll's progress. We also trigger the entry and exit animations depending on the scroll direction, forward or backward, ensuring the correct transitions for each image as we scroll. For the progress bar, we use this app to animate its site, tying it to the scroll progress for each cycle. As you scroll forward, the bar fills up, and when you scroll back, the bar reduces, showing the progress visual in sync with the image transitions. And that's how we are dynamically controlling both the images and the progress bar as the user scrolls, creating this smooth interactive scroll animation experience. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.